thanks for hopping on the show, Trev. Yeah, thanks for having me. So like we were uh, talking, uh, texting back and forth there, uh, kind of my plan to do this year was something a little different. I wanted to do uh, something that I, I haven't seen anybody else do. It's basically going to be um, a four-part mini-series on calling elk. Now, one of the things like I'm very guilty of, as you know, is I don't pick up my reeds or my bugle tubes until about two weeks to three weeks before the season. And now, <laughs> you know, um, I should be starting to practice. Now I, I have called before I, you know, I, I would, I'm not as an experienced elk caller as you, but I can call. So I don't feel that I need to necessarily start going through all my calls right now, but you know what, it wouldn't hurt. But basically I was thinking what would be really handy is if we can basically just start from scratch and kind of go through, you know, a lot of guys that hunt elk, they have a real hard time using a read call. And yeah. now with your calls, you know, I use one call and that's it. One read and that's it. I use it for cow calling. I also, and I use it with my bugle too. Um, so yeah, I would, I just kind of <clears throat> want to basically, like I said, pick, you know, go through a couple calls. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to basically start with how to make sound, um, you know, and then as these series kind of progress through part four series, we'll get into, you know, some of the, you know, more uh, intermediate calls. We're not going to get into expert calls like you can do, obviously, because, you know, that would take a lifetime. And uh, I mean, you've dedicated your whole life to making calls and elk calling. So, and I don't think we need to go into it that deep. Uh, but, you know, just like basically how to make some calls, how to make that read work, uh, going into applying them with a bugle tube, and then from there, what calls to use and when to use them to be successful when you're hunting. Sure. Yeah, exactly. And and being realistic, you know, most guys, we should keep it pretty basic for them anyways. And the basic calls are really, that's all you really need to go out there and call elk in anyhow. Yeah, 100%. Like I said, you know, you and I have talked quite a bit and like I use um, just cow sounds mostly and I've killed, you know, yep. a few elk with just cow sounds. I mean, obviously, you know, I really did struggle previously with other bugle tubes, but, you know, with your bugle tube and that little custom mouthpiece at the end, it really helped me with my, uh, you know, bull sounds and stuff. So yeah. we can get into that a little later. So why don't you yeah, just start sure. off simply with like, maybe just a couple of your calls, you know, just tell us quickly what they are and we'll just stick with those calls throughout this whole okay. little series. And then you can just basically walk us through is like for the guy, the guy who just buys that read off the shelf, how to make a call. Yeah. Okay. And so, if you've got anything to add, Derek, just pop right in buddy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I'll just hold up a couple basic calls here. So I got the frolicker and I got the sassy. So what these are, they're basic, they're really light latex reads. And you can see, if I hold it up, it's a really light latex. So for the basics and, you know, guys there and gals that are learning how to call, find yourself a read that says cow or calf read. And that's what mine do. If I bring it up close mm -hmm. right here, they say cow or calf. Same with this sassy. And on my new packaging up in the top corner, I also put, a little logo up there for oh, you know yeah. that's a little little cow and a little calf cool. my bugling reads versus that they'll have a bull elk oh yeah so nice. oh, kind of gives you an idea um just by looking at the card what you can kind of expect and that's going to basically tell you thickness of the latex as well so a bull reed is going to be thicker latex cow and calf reed is going to be thinner so the thinner latex is always the easiest to learn on. And basically when you're learning with a reed, just basically if this is my tongue, you're just basically putting it on your tongue and you're raising it to the roof of your mouth. So the whole trick behind it, I'm keeping the tip of my tongue here. That's down in the, in the bottom of my lower teeth. And I'm actually arching my tongue up like this, not lifting my tongue up like that. Because the whole, the whole science behind using a reed is you're trying to get air to go across this latex. So by doing that, all I do is put it on my tongue 
and literally use the air in your chest and your diaphragm. And what I tell people, hiss like a snake. So you're literally going, and that's why kids pick it up so good because they like doing that kind of stuff anyways, right? <clears throat> so when you put it on your tongue, basically you don't even have to lift the reed up or nothing. Just kind of tilt it up just a little bit and start hissing. So literally go, and with the reed in, on my tongue, raise it up, keep the tip of your tongue down and hiss. Now, obviously, that doesn't sound like an elk, but now if you start raising it up higher and higher with your tongue, just start pressing it into the roof of your mouth. What it actually feels like before you put the reed in, take your tongue and arch your tongue and feel like you're touching your upper molars. And that's literally how it feels once you put your reed in. And then once you start hissing, that tone will go up higher and higher. So as you start pressing your tongue up. So that's kind of the whole basics behind it. Um, you are using your air down here in your diaphragm. You're not using the air like if you're going to um, say whistle. Like you're not using that air at all. The air coming out is actually warm. So basically put it on your tongue, raise it up, and then just start hissing. Now I see when you're doing that, Trev, you're moving your mouth. Now, is that like you're manipulating when you're doing that, you're manipulating the sound coming out of your mouth when you do that, or are you doing anything with your tongue as you're doing that? Not really. My tongue is doing all the work for me. Right. Um, but as you close your lips and open your lips, you'll get more volume. So if you close your lips, So that's why after you, it's kind of normal for you to start doing that after a while. You'll just throw different sounds out. You're going to throw calf, cow, calf, cow. And basically you're going to have different lips for how the volume you want. A lot of people you'll see, they'll be like cupping their mouth and doing it behind them and stuff like that. That's kind of little tricks for in the woods. Um, you don't really have to do it when you're practicing. But it, it kind of becomes natural after a while. Travis, yeah, sure. how do yep. you, uh, what different call, like, is it call volume or is it a distinctive tone difference? If you're trying to say, uh, call using like a cow call versus like a calf call. Uh, basically it's the same. Um, so the air coming out is pretty much the same. Um, you can add more air to get more volume. Uh, but to do a calf call, instead of like to do a cow call, you're going ew, ew. to do a calf call. You're just going. Ew, ew, ew. So if I put it in my mouth and show you a cow call. <coughs> calf. But you're basically, the air coming out is pretty much the same, unless you're trying to really amplify it. Then you can blow harder. So you can see it's just adding a little more air force to it. So Trav, I know one thing I did uh, when I first started trying to learn how to use a, a reed was my, I got a lot of saliva, almost choked on a thing. Is there anything guys can yep. do to not have so much like <clears throat> to not have that happen as bad as I did? Yeah. So um, I don't know. You can kind of tell with my reeds. I have the little cuts in them. Mm -hmm. That's that makes all the sides fold independently. Gotcha. So it actually molds to the roof of your mouth a lot better. 
And, and I guess that's important to make sure that there's no air traveling through mm -hmm. that because that must be a lot of like where the saliva. Yeah, exactly. From. That's where it comes. People are trying to blow harder and mm -hmm. the more you blow, the more saliva you build. Um, and the other thing, even I do it before I put the reed in my mouth, I'll swallow. So your mouth is nice and clear and then get the reed in right away. Do a couple sounds. And then pull it out and always swallow down again. Even while you're calling, you're going to build up saliva and mm -hmm. it's going to be on the reed and whatever. If it gets really bad, just wipe it on your clothes and, and start again kind of thing. It's, it's totally natural for that to happen. And basically I can, all I can say is do a couple calls, pull it out and then basically, you know, swallow your saliva down or spit or whatever you're going to do and then uh, go back to it. Right. For sure. Awesome. Okay. Now that we know, um, now that we got that, you know, how to, how to make the sound come out of the reed, what's next? Like, let's, let's talk a little bit about bugle tubes. Uh, and then maybe we'll talk about using the reed with a bugle tube. Sure. Yeah. So the bugle tube, basically, this is a bugle tube. They're basically hollow. I can put you there. Mm -hmm. You can see right through it. And same on this end. So the nice thing about bugle tubes, there's so many different on the market. Like you just go to any store and there's, you know, 10 or 20 different ones to pick from. Um, <clears throat> I like something kind of on the little smaller. This is called my mini rump shaker. It's the little rip, basically, is what it is. So it's a lot smaller than my or original one was the rump shaker. It was quite a bit longer and bigger. Um, so I've switched. I think I that's, made... that's this one here. I believe that's this one, right? It's a little bit bigger, the rump shaker. Yeah, the rump shaker is bigger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, around here is the same size, but I took a couple inches out of it off the end here. Now, does could... that make a difference? Let's talk about that real quickly. Does size of the sure. tube make a difference? It actually does. If you're trying to portray lots of volume out there, the bigger the tube, the better. Um, Try not to go anything smaller than this. Like I know we all started back in the day. We all had like vacuum hoses that are like small around. Um, if you use small stuff, you get small sounds. So right. you use something with a big chamber and you get a lot bigger sounds out of it. Now um, is one is one harder to use than the other? Like as a big tube for more, you know, advanced callers like yourself, world-class callers? Not really. They're the same exact thing. Basically, what you want to think of the uh, tube is is basically your amplifier. So gotcha. you and your reed are doing all the sounds, but the sound that's coming in here is basically the tube is making back pressure. So as you're going up higher on your reed, trying to go to a higher pitch, mm -hmm. this this little round part here is basically it's silicone. So your air is coming through it. It's hitting this end, but then it's starting to bounce back. And that helps pressurize your reed a little bit. And it puts a little bit more pressure on the latex. So it helps you go to that next note a little bit. And it's called back pressure is what it's called. So as your sound is traveling down, your air is traveling down through here. It's hitting the end, bouncing back. And then once you hit that higher note, it kind of holds there automatically for you. You can actually release your pressure off your reed just a little bit. And it'll stay in that note for you. So... Gotcha. Does your mouthpiece play a role in that for dam or do you have different sizes or, or uh, do you notice any, any change in back pressure when you're doing different calls with your mouthpiece size? Uh, not really. So I keep mine. It's a pretty big mouthpiece. The reason I do that, you can see on here, it's flared as well. So the reason I do that, um, certain bugles, you're going to want to be spudding your lips like a lip ball. Yeah. So having a bigger opening lets you have your lips more inside of it and to the outside edges rather than going over top. Um, but when you're doing a lip ball, you're sputtering your lips. So you don't really want your lips to touch inside here. So let me just kind of, I'll show you what the sound would be just real quick. <laughs> So that's kind of what the sound would be. So you're literally just spudding your lips really tight 
they're together and you're just <laughs> it's kind of what you're doing but the minute you take your tube and you do that with your lips and you touch to here the vibration's going to stop and then your mm-hmm. sound is all going to stop so <clears throat> that's that's getting pretty far into the calling of it yeah, um for sure um, but that a, just is there I, any tube that you would suggest a beginner start with um not really i would just say if you have a tube at home or your dad has a tube or your brother or someone in your family has one just grab it and start playing with it one um, thing i wanted to add was that this little i always struggled with the traditional tube style yeah now this little cup piece now my screen is is uh here i'm gonna switch the screen around here so the people listening can see it so this little piece that you add to the end of your bugle tubes yeah made all the difference in the world in my ability and sound with this tube i don't mm-hmm. sound nearly as good well, I would like to think I don't sound nearly as good <laughs> with the other one. I mean, I'm not saying I sound good with, you know, either way, but I'm saying yeah. with this little with this little piece that you put on end, this little rubber piece, it it yeah. sure definitely helped me uh with my bugle tube and, you know, like I said, I am, you know, far from experienced when it comes to elk calling. So, yeah. Uh, well, well part of that, if you take that end cap off, that hole's a lot smaller because now you're just dealing with the plastic. Um, this I have mine glued on pretty good, so I don't pull it off. Um, but the hole is a lot smaller rather than calling on the on the end of here, and that's kind of why I flared it. You know, I I kind of did it for like creature comfort as well, uh, but it does make a difference when you're when you're calling. Gotcha for sure. Okay.